welcome back to Smashing Heads Podcast. This is episode 40. We're live on Instagram right now. We, we may start doing this out in the intros uh, every week. We'll see. Uh, my name is Zach. As always, I'm joined by my wife, Hannah. Hey. My best friend, Jake. How's everybody doing tonight? Not only are we live on Instagram, we are live in your earbuds. Except it's pre-recorded, if you're listening at this point. Yeah, I mean... It, so if you're not live. Not live. Only yeah. if you're watching the Instagram. I didn't know where you were going with that. You know, um, we uh, we've talked about possibly doing a live stream in the future if we can get a uh, enough money put back to save up for some cameras and some stuff. We might start doing some live stream versions. That's just expensive to start out. Yeah, uh, Jay Clark. I don't know your real name. Sorry. Uh, it's actually more than forty because we we had an episode zero, and then we also have the point five interview. So we're actually, I think, almost. I think it's like 46 or 47 right now, episode-wise. We're trying to reply to Instagram comments. You uh, you need to, you just need to be here. We're, we're going to have to not do that much because there's no context. No, I think that's a good way to put it. You need to be here. Yeah, you do need to be here. Speaking of that, if you do not follow us on social media... You missed a big announcement this week. You missed week. a huge announcement this week. We launched a Patreon. And there's a video up. It's a pinned tweet. Um, You can go on a... On our website, if you want, you don't even have to go on social media. We have a website now, too. It's just www.smashingheadspodcast.com. From there, it'll link you to our Patreon, but you also can listen to the podcast from there. And we're very excited about it. We have three tiers. Um, I will say the the top tier so far, I've blown away, has been Bloodlines. Everyone wants in on Bloodlines. And because of it, we have a group. It's a group chat, basically, from Slack and uh, the cool thing about that is if you're in that tier, you're getting extra content. You're also getting one-on-one communication with us, and they're able to talk to other people that are fans of the show. And then they talked during the, uh, the episode tonight about what was happening. And then also, we're going to be periodically checking uh, when we record so we can get uh, some questions and stuff from you guys as we're recording the podcast. So that's, that's kind of uh, one of the big tiers. I mean, that's not the only thing in it. Jake, do you want to... Do you want to hit our tiers real quick? You've got it pulled up, don't you? I want to hit a lot of things, but uh, I'll, did you not get that? Was that bad? Yeah, I'm, it wasn't bad, but... You never laugh at my jokes. That wasn't a good joke. All right, well, here's what we got here. Uh, our tiers. See, you had me have uh, the patrons pulled up, so... Yeah, yeah. You pulled a double whammy on me. Mm. <laughs> All right. Fresh meat, which is your initial... Startup tier. That's for, our, it's our entry level tier. It's our entry level tier for one dollar or, or more, or more a month. per month. Yeah. Um, I'm just gonna read what you got topped up here because you created this, right? I did, and I had to recreate all the graphics because I did not want to get in trouble with MTV. There we go. So thank you so much. Is what you started off with. That's real plot. This tier helps keep the normal <laughs> show running. <laughs> This tier helps keep the normal show running, and you will have your name listed on our website under Patreon, as well as shout out as a shout out on an upcoming podcast. You will also be able to vote on polls about upcoming shows, merch, etc., and Patreon supporters, etc. 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 You never say etc. <laughs> no. no, nobody okay. says that. All right. And Patreon supporters <laughs> will get all announcements before they hit our social media pages. You see this? We're getting Slack notifications right now. I tell you people. what, I like this. Well, let's, li- let's let's get to the next tier. All right. Uh, the next tier is free agents. It's all challenge themed. So you get everything. You didn't thank anyone for that. You get everything in the previous tier. <laughs> thank you. Was in the first tier. <laughs> Plus, you will get at least two Patreon exclusive podcasts a month. This tier will also get all our interviews a full 20 hours in advance. 24 hours. Is that not what I said? I said 20. No, you said 20. Listen, oh my God. I know this off the top of my head. I just figured you could read it. A full 24 hours in advance of their wide release. We will keep an ad-free version. Oh, you need to... There's another typo by you. Is uh, We will keep an ad-free versions. Oh, it's because I had to change it because someone said it, the grammar was wrong, and I'll uh, fix that. I'll yeah, fix way that. to go. Oh, way it. to go. Add free versions of our recap shows. I'm sorry shows. I did all of the work on the back end of this stuff. For Patreon only. Plus, you will be sent a Smashing Heads podcast logo sticker in the mail. Yeah, basically the, the main selling point of that is 
For $5 or more a month, you're going to get at least two bonus podcasts from us that are only going to be on Patreon. You're going to get all of our interviews 24 hours in advance, and all of the interviews and recap shows will stay ad-free for Patreon subscribers. Um, We will be launching into ads. Um, We've been able to do it for a long time. We've just put it off, but we're going to launch into having ads in the main show more than likely pretty soon. And so Patreon, uh, you're you're paying for the show, and so you're going to get ad-free versions. And you can copy and paste the RSS feed right into your whatever podcast player you like the best. So that's a big incentive. The next one is... Lastly, we have yeah. Bloodlines. You get everything in the previous two tiers, plus we will do live Q&As slash AMAs. Do you know what that means? Once a month, I don't. <laughs> you don't know what that means? <laughs> ask me anything. Jake. Uh, it could be American... It's a, it's, a, it's a Reddit thing. Music Awards. Yeah, but like literally people know what that means. Except Jake. We will also be doing giveaways exclusive to this tier, and we will be randomly picking people to come on a podcast in the future. If you want. We're not going to force you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, we will also give you access to a private Slack, which we... Uh, which that's what this is. Yeah. It's basically a huge group chat for everyone in this tier, um, and you can there's different little boards, and you can set it to Do Not Disturb and all that. So the cool thing is people who have already subscribed to this tier, they were all interacting and co- talking and commenting all day long since they've been adding it, and uh, it's just a cool way because a lot of people tell us, I really love the challenge. I don't have anyone to talk to about it because they just don't know people in their real life, which we, we kind of are the same way. Like We knew each other. And we made Hannah start watching it. That's right. Yeah, I didn't get a choice. And uh, like a lot of people just don't know, but there's there's probably more than you expect. I mean, than I guess you realize. But this gives you a way to talk with people like one on one or no. I guess it's a group chat. It could be one on one if you want, but there's no personal information involved, so you don't it's have really to neat. have you don't have to have someone's phone number or anything like that. And you just ask for people to keep it spoiler free. We will let the Slack group know when we start recording. So if you have questions you want answered during the podcast, wow, I missed that. That's a neat little trick there you did. Yeah, that's what that's what yeah. I, I said. So all right, I think I did add that later. That's my I didn't tell you my fault. Um, but it's but, a good idea. So yeah, uh, someone on Instagram is asking what kind of content will the Patreon podcast be. Well, it's going to be probably a mix of things. Um, we may do some deep dives on some old seasons. We might do... We're definitely going to rewatch older seasons. Yeah, but, so that's a but we might also do like a real world season, or we might do like a Big Brother season, since we're getting a lot of people from that. We're going to let the Patreon uh, like subscribers vote on what we do. So that's going to be one way that we're going to do bonus podcasts. We're also going to talk to people in the challenge sphere we know a lot of other podcasters we know a lot of people that write stuff about the challenge we want to get their takes on things um not necessarily that would go in our main podcast feed but something that we want to be able to give you guys at least two bonus podcasts a month for the the subscription and so that's the main thing and the bloodlines tier is by far the most popular one like it's it's i think it's like three to one of everything else yeah yeah um which is pretty surprising uh I don't know. To me, at least, um, do we want to do we want to shout out our patrons? Yeah. Now? So uh, again, part of part of the tiers is uh, no matter if you're the one dollar tier, five dollar, ten dollar, more. We've had some people give more. Um, we're go- you're going to get a shout out on an episode. You're going to get your name on the website under people who support us. So this is a new venture for us. We'll be doing this as the show goes on. So. It's going to be part of it. I mean, it is what it is. We're we're very grateful for all you guys that have stuck with us and that are listening and that have given us a chance so far. Somebody's probably really mad we're still talking about our Patreon, but you know what? Listen, I'm not I'm not going to apologize again. Oh, one. here we go. No, no, no. Like we we were watching a YouTube channel earlier. Do you, do you remember the name you said it? Uh, Pubby Wubby Pay Fund. Yeah, uh, Pay <laughs> Pay Money Wubby is a guy, and it, his his I, I don't agree with all of his stuff, but. He's like, I'm not going to apologize for, you know, setting up a Patreon or a Twitch asking for money or whatever, because otherwise I'm not able to do this stuff. And we've been paying out of pocket for everything. And like, we love what we do, but we want to make sure we can continue to be able to do it. And we also wanted to escalate what we're giving to you guys. So it's not just that we're asking for support and then you're not getting anything else in return. Like we, we, we thought strategically about these tiers for 
what? Probably over a month. Yeah. I mean, we've been talking about this for a long time, and we wanted to make sure all the tiers were worth it at their price point. So we got feedback we, before we launched, and uh, everyone seemed to agree with us. They're just talking to each other on Instagram <laughs> as we're recording. Hey. I don't know why that was so Pound funny. It. <laughs> it took so long. You're such a loser. <laughs> Thank you. Show me your mess. Uh, again. Memes. Is it it's memes. memes. Is it memes? <laughs> Show me your mess. So, again, if you guys wanted to be a part of the Bloodlines, there's a whole group chat happening right now. Um, they're asking questions. We'll try to get... We can't get to all of them every week. It's, it is what it is. If you want more information on the Patreon... You can go to patreon.com slash smashing heads podcast or <laughs> smashing heads podcast.com and you can check it out all from there. Uh, you can read all the tiers, you can sign up, you can, you know, get all the, the updates. And we're posting more than just what we read. Like we're we're posting some guest announcements and stuff, which by the way, we have another guest that's gonna be coming on soon. We've got a couple of guests. We we do. We're not gonna up. get into some of that now. But one that we can announce that Patreon got the news of first is that Frank Sweeney's coming on. Yeah. Did you watch Battle of the Seasons? Did you watch Rivals 2? Did you watch Invasion of the Champions? Frank is a great competitor and he's been he's been missing for a few seasons now. Uh he's Which been is, if I, you were going to take any man out on a date it's going to be Frank. I am Let's I be am honest. unabashedly not shy <laughs> that Frank is a good-looking man. He's yeah. real handsome, and yeah. he dresses very well. Uh, and so, yeah, there you go. Frank. Frank's coming on. He He's traveling a lot in the next couple weeks, and so it may be like three weeks from now, or maybe. but he said it's cool to go ahead and start promoting that he's coming on the show. He's one that I thought might lay low, and, you know, kind of he's been focusing on school, but we're, we're, we're super excited to have him on. We got a couple of other ones in the works that we're not going to announce yet, but you guys ready? I, I haven't named our patrons yet. God, I forgot. You never let me do that. All right, Jake, I know, you keep cutting him off. Jake's going to name our patrons. Well, again, I'm trying to... It's a lot of information up top because it's a new thing for us. And so we've got to be clear about what it is. There's a fast forward button if you're super annoyed by now. Yeah, it's fine. So we're sticking with first names only. No, right? Read both. Do we? Yeah, read both. Uh, Some people are weird. Well, yeah, I Hannah's weird. I wouldn't want my full name. They don't have to put their full name if they don't want to. That's well, true. what if they didn't know that? That's Too true. Too late. All right. Well, we've got a shout out. Do, do do a first name and then an initial. All right. That's fair enough. Uh, shout out to Baker R. Baker R. A lot of these names are familiar to us. Yeah. Yeah. Brian M. Mm-hmm. In the in the Instagram right now. Yeah. Uh, Cassandra D. Mm-hmm. Connor R. Mm-hmm. Crystal H. You're getting a lot of hearts on Instagram, by the way. Yeah. Who's who's doing that? I don't, I don't know, know a lot of them. I don't know how to do that. Uh, Dylan G, who you had a big uh, exchange about your Funko Pops for about a... Uh, um, hey, guys, what are we doing? What are you doing to me? I'm just showing them. Those are... Yeah. Give, give the name. Yeah, you and Dylan G had a big exchange uh, I saw on our Instagram uh, about the Funko Pops. So, congratulations. <laughs> Why well, you sip your Pellegrino? My... Pellegrino. We've got Jennifer A. Aniston? Nope. It might be. No, it's not. Jerry B. Carrie S. Or is it Kari? I apologize. I think it's just Carrie, right? Yeah, Kari. It's Carrie, it's Carrie. All right. Uh, Kelvin. Uh, call him Chico. <laughs> yeah. Uh, we got another Carrie. Carrie G. Yeah, that's the one I'm thinking of. Uh, we just got a Lisa here. No last name for Lisa, but shout out to Lisa. Uh, our guy, Logan H. Nicole B. This is sparkling water, guys. My sparkling water. Uh, yeah, uh, Logan, uh, Rotten Bananas podcast. Uh, if you need another challenge podcast, he does Survivor stuff too. Um, Paul S., who we like to refer to as... Statman Paul. That's or right. Or is it Stat Checker Paul? He's in, the, he's in the Slack chat. I don't remember. Statman Paul. Statman Paul. Uh, Rebecca F. Robin, no last name provided. Uh, Shanna S. and Tori C. So, uh, can we just, real quick, our first 19. Just, uh, 
Big Time Rush over here, BTR. <laughs> hey, that's a good band. All right, guys, uh, we're going to end the Instagram, and then we're going to get into the episode for tonight. So we'll see you guys next time. Thanks for the shout outs again. Uh, Patreon.com slash Smashing Heads Podcast, Smashing Heads Podcast.com. Hey, don't do it. Have a good night, everyone. The podcast isn't over. It's no, just, it's not. Yeah, I we're just, in the middle uh, of a podcast. Instagram's over. So, again, if you want to be a part of the Patreon or anything like that, check those out. And we are getting into tonight's episode. It's a heavy, it's a heavy informational episode. We had to. It's the first night. So, here we go. What do you guys want to talk about? Uh, Bear thinks that everybody in this house is scared of him, and I just don't understand. I just wrote that Bear's really happy. Like, he was just... He's coming back from an elimination. He knows he's safe. He's going to get to gloat about everything. He's in his happiest <clears throat> stage when he can annoy people. Yeah, but that seems to be all the time. Oh, yeah. That, it's definitely... And it's kind of annoying. <laughs> I mean, it is who he is. He's, he's not going to make any... Uh, any qualms about who he is? Is that the right word? Quarrels? That's not the right word. Apologies. A That's qu- not the word I'm looking for. Either. A At quarrel least it's, it's is started a, with a Q. Is a thing though. Yeah, but it's not. It's not what a I meant. A quarrel is like a like a not intense fight, like an argument with someone. Put an S at the front of it, and you get you real get chaotic. Squirrels. They're nuts. I don't you know. Got, you get it. An you S in did. front of quarrel does not equal squirrels. squirrel. <laughs> Jake, Jake got it. This guy's he's stupid. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> stupid. Uh, I got where you were going. <laughs> so again, Bear Bear's going to be in his happy and happiest whenever he gets to just be annoying, and so he's going to get to be that way this whole episode. Which we see it gets to West later on. I mean, I mean, I think it gets to everybody. Yeah, I mean, even like Car and some other ones said it, but I mean, it it, it seemed to get under West's skin. More than I expected. But yeah. he, he did tell us that was one of his... Uh, he, he said Bear's good politically. He knows how to get under people's skin. So he could e- at least give him his accolades on that. Yeah. Um, it's uh, we, we immediately see, after that, Kyle um, talking about how he doesn't like that... How Kara and Polly are just always, like, touching each other <laughs> in the polite way of saying well, it. he... He says that they're basically rubbing their love in his face. And I was just really surprised to see him that upset about it. Yeah. I thought he was the one that didn't care and Kara was the one that would be upset. I think they both care more than they want to admit. But I mean, like we literally saw Kyle distraught. Later. Yeah, later. I I agree. I, I didn't expect him to get like that. Um I don't know. It was, it's a weird. It's a weird thing. Yeah, I'm not used to seeing him like that. I definitely think he cares, but I think in general, when stuff, you know, or a certain thing just keeps getting thrown in your face, like it becomes tiresome at some point. Like it wears you down. Yeah. Well, I know that his his explanation of it wasn't like specifically Kara and Polly being together, but the fact that he was quote unquote being treated like a second class citizen. Yeah. And that's what really was hurting him. I mean, he, he's a self proclaimed non member of the UK Alliance. <clears throat> he sided with Wes and some of them, but I mean, he's not Wes's number one. He's not Hunter's number one. He's not obviously not Polly or Kara's number one. And Zach already left. Yeah, and so he is kind of in a no man's land as far as alliances. Like I, I don't think anyone is specifically going after him other than Polly. But uh it's it's a it can be a lonely place. I can see where he's coming from. I don't I didn't expect him to be as bummed out as what he was. Um but I mean he really doesn't his, his number one would be Maddie, and at the end of this episode we see that nobody's teams anymore. Uh well, speaking of Polly, what surprised me again was the fact that Ninja Natalie was so concerned that she and Polly were the only team in the house that hadn't bonded or connected. And I I oh. didn't realize that they didn't take that time together. Um, but she kind of seemed a little bit bitter because she added at the end because of Kara. I think at one point she said they were joined at the groin or something along those lines. 
Yeah. Um, she did say something I wonder like if that. Theo felt the same way. Joined at the groin? <laughs> yeah. I wonder if Theo felt that uh, that Kara wasn't bonding with him because they, her and Polly at this point are newly together out in the open. Um, this is their first challenge really together. And so they're in that phase where they are like, all they want to do is rub it in everyone's faces and let everyone know that they are having sex at all times. And that's gross. So I wonder if Theo feels the same way. Like we didn't see it. Um, I wonder if he's uh, kind of in the same boat where he feels like I have no <clears throat> connection to Car. Like he's friends with the UK people and he's friends with uh, Cam uh, more than friends. But uh, I don't know. It's it's weird. I, I didn't get that vibe from Ninja and Polly before until she said it. But obviously, you know, that may have been stuff they cut out. Yeah. And well, that's we, the thing. Yeah. We know uh, last season. I just got an email that our podcasts are on Spotify now. Hey. I, I did all that earlier. So if you want to follow us on Spotify, do that. Shout out to Spotify. But yeah. we know from last season, uh, Polly talked about having the ability to turn his sex switch off. He does not have that ability. Well, hold no. on. No, no, no. I'm not going to deny not the man his even. ability. He does not have that he, ability. No. All right, we, here's what we do know is we know he listens now. We do. Okay, so we, we can get into that a little bit. We know he listens. We also, he, we, we've talked with him. I'm not going to get into too much, but uh, yeah, it, he, he definitely listens. Here's what, here's what I was getting to, though, is I'm not going to question the man's ability to... Uh, Turn on or off his sex switch. Hold on. His is... His, I, I, but here's his thing. His sex switch got turned on, and then someone broke it off, and it's just permanently stuck on. Well, what if he just turned it on? And there's, like, levels to it. You know, like a like a light that you dim? It's not like an on and off <laughs> switch. He's just got his on, a, like, a washing machine. It's on heavy. What? <laughs> You're mixing okay, your appliance you metaphors. So, the... the <laughs> The thing I'm getting at is his sex switch is clearly on this season. Now he hadn't denied it, right? So <laughs> I don't know where you're going with this. So, I feel like you're making a point that everyone who's watched the show is fully aware of. It's no, he, he's I, very horny a lot of the time. I mean, who isn't at some point, right? <laughs> Can I tell you something? No. You, did you say no? Can I don't you tell know. me something? Yeah. Yeah. Go for it. No, you already know. I don't think I know. Uh, anyway, uh, yeah. We, the next thing we see Ninja pull D aside, and because uh, D's kind of telling her, West leaves me out of some things. But if I ever ask him, he'll tell me. Like he's trying to just protect me with it. And West had a good line. He's like, "I'm her pancreas. Like she doesn't know what I'm doing. He's like, but I'm here to like filter out all the bad stuff. And if I wasn't there, she'd be in trouble." And she wouldn't survive is what is that what he said yeah. i didn't write the actual quote down um but yeah it's a it's a strange dynamic because we i don't think any of us picked up that vibe from them we i think we all thought they were a pretty strong team yeah no um <clears throat> i i never picked that up even a little bit because they had been doing so well on the daily they're challenges they, they're probably the, that you you yeah. wouldn't pick up that there were any underlying issues that either hadn't been resolved or hadn't even been uncovered yet. It's going to be interesting once the teams are dissolved, who is like the strong one individual. I wonder what that's going to do to like the British Alliance. Cause those Brits were, were like able to protect a lot of the Americans because they were partnered with them. Mm -hmm. I don't know what that's going to do now. And so that I, again, I, I like that twist. Like we, we're not really f to that part where he announces it yet, but I, I do like that as a twist. Um, cause I don't think anyone saw it coming. And, uh, yeah, the next thing we, we kind of saw was the sad Kyle, the like bummed out talking to Maddie, how he's like, I, I'm just out of it. I don't want to be here. He said he, I think he said he was the most social talkative person to ever be on the challenge. And he's just not there now. I don't know if that's true, but. Well, I really liked seeing Maddie be so supportive, and, and Kyle did too, and he even said, he's like, I really love this girl because she's got my back no matter what. And she may be the only one who's got it no matter what. I Honestly, at this point, I absolutely believed that she was the only person in the house that really had his back. I, I Yeah, again, like I said, I think Wes um, 
is not going after Kyle. I think they're like they're friendly. Wes said tonight, I've got a number one. I'm not gonna tell you anything beyond that. Yeah. Um, but uh it's it is weird. It's definitely it's it's like uh he was going through a bout of like almost depression. Um It was weird to see because, you know, again, we've never seen Kyle like this on the show. Granted, this is only his third season. Yeah. I thought it was his second. It's his third one. He made the final the first season. That's right. Yeah. Still, for three seasons, we've never seen him like this. No, and, and it was it was a bit concerning. A like lot, I, I, I was uncomfortable seeing him like that. A lot of people don't like Kyle. I really, I find him to be really fun. Like I enjoy watching him. I get the the whole fighting between him and Polly can get tired after a while, but I do like him. I like a lot of the Brits, to be honest. Oh, I do too. They add a new element to the show it, that. Was missing before. Even like Joss and Kaylee oh, and man. some of the other ones that we. I don't wish see. Joss was on this season. Because as if you're a longtime listener, he's God's gift to women. Women's no. gift to the earth. Women's gift to the earth. You said it the I, right way. I said it the right way. <laughs> yeah, but yes, he is women's gift to the earth. He's a woman's gift to the earth because he had a mom. Yeah, everybody has a mom. Yeah. Shout out to Mama Joss. It's not you her, think you think you her think name. her name is Joss too? <laughs> what is? <laughs> what are the odds? <laughs> not good. Why don't you look that up and find it's a it? Stupid game too. Um. <laughs> so we we see Hunter come to Wes and basically Wes and Georgia are <coughs> upset with Hunter, like because we saw him blow up. He doesn't play smart. He's losing his. Basically, his uh, his way in the game, and he doesn't play with his brain. He plays with his heart. He gets caught up in every little bit of everything, and because of that, Wes tells him to just be a liar. I think they said sociopath a couple of times. Hunter said sociopath. I feel like he didn't really know what the word means, but it's no. something Wes told him. I, <laughs> He's I like, really I don't need think to be a understood. sociopath. I don't think he understands. It doesn't mean liar, but um, it, they do lie a lot. Uh, and uh, he comes up with this, like, Wes is going to be the counselor. He brings him up there. Polly just, Im- I mean, not Polly, sorry. Hunter just immediately. Now we know who you're thinking about. Yeah, that's it. I think I had Polly written down because they're the next thing. Um, Hunter immediately just, like, lies. Like, I'm sorry for all this stuff. And the thing, like, George just completely bought it. Well, the thing is, like, he even went as far as saying, I was I was wrong and you were right. And then he kind of, like, grinned. And then she, like, I legitimately thought that she was going to be like, you're just trying to pull one over on me to try to get me to come back on your side so that I'll compete with you. <laughs> and, but, I mean, she... She really surprised me because she hugged him, and then in her confessional, she's like, "I have the best partner in the whole world. <laughs> he is so amazing." Well, let me let me say we don't know a lot about Georgia because we did not watch Love Island or whatever show she came from. We do know that she's very quick to forgive because the, I think it was last episode was the thing with Bear. Yeah, because it was that was my cousin. That yeah. was my cousin. That was my cousin. By the end of the episode, which was even if that's forty eight hours later, like she was already completely fine. We saw them tonight; they were back beside each other, hugging up. Like she, she forgets very quickly, and I don't know if that is she is too nice and assumes the best about people, or if she is not the smartest. And I'm not saying one way or the other. Or maybe she just doesn't care. I oh, she cares because she wouldn't have got into it with Hunter. If she didn't care, yeah. Um, but I don't, I don't know enough about her. But w- give it up for her; she, she does not hold a grudge. That's that's a good way to be. That is and a good I, way. To I be. guarantee you, there are so many people that wish that they could be like that, so that they wouldn't be like stressed over things or worrying about anything. She just lives her life carefree. That's Jake's favorite movie. Which one is that? The Grudge. I tell you what, man. When you've got a woman that her bones contort, you know, wiggle waggling down the hallway. <laughs> Wait, they're doing what down the hallway? They're wiggle waggling down the hallway. That's a little weird, man. You I got know. a you got a little boy that meow 
He's a cat. What? No, he meows like a cat. I've never seen that movie. I we should watch either. it sometime. Isn't Sarah Michelle Gellar in it? And the first one. Yeah. I wouldn't watch any past the first one. Well, here's the thing is uh I'm uh I'm a little offended at Wes. Okay. Because if he's got time for couples therapy. Speaking of that, <laughs> I did I, I don't know if you read the emails between Polly and Wes and us. But I did ask Wes because I kept just Polly included Wes in some emails that we were talking through, and uh, I just kept replying all, so Wes had to read all of them. <laughs> so well, he deserves it. I know that's what I was, I was like. You better be working on that app because we've had a lot of people ask about, it, and he did not respond to that question. <laughs> that's funny. Do you think he's ever going to actually? No, you it's... can't just pick and choose which commitments you want to stick to, Wes. Oh, I agree. The only commitment he had he has to stick to is the one that he made to his wife when they got married. Wrong. He doesn't owe wrong. anything to you. Wrong. Wrong. What? wrong. Not the only one. That's wrong. She's wrong. Yeah. He made a commitment to our lives and our hearts. Oh, he made a commitment to coming on every week. Well, I kind of forced him into that one. Well. And to be fair, I don't think I've asked him. Maybe maybe that's all it takes. You just got to ask him. That's right. Um, you know, at the, at the bottom of it all... I think Wes is a very reasonable guy. Yeah, uh, a lot of people are very upset with him right now. We'll get to that. Yeah, um, so the Daily for today, it's the one they've been teasing on all the promos since this season came out. I think the first trailer for this this uh, season had, like, a you saw the long sweeping shot of the trucks going and people swinging across. We didn't know what it was. Turns out it's called Road Warrior. And basically there's 16 rings. You have a set space you have to transfer the 16 rings across if you drop them you oh, lose well. them. yeah like it's it's done you, you can't get it back and you have to finish before i don't know they didn't ever say how long but there's a there's a finish line and you can't start until the truck gets going 50 miles an hour which is a lot faster than what they were being dragged behind which was around i think like 18, 18 yeah something like that and so uh TJ says it's randomly assigned. Polly and Natalie go first. Ninja Natalie. Um, Again, for does, these all to be randomly assigned, they go first a lot. They're up to some tricks here. They did for sure go first on the one where Gus smashed his face. I can't remember other ones for sure where they went first, but I, I, it seems it seems like it's been a lot. Um, But uh, they go first. They do pretty well. I thought they would do well, um, but they did drop one. And that was their downfall. Nah, you can't be perfect. Nobody's perfect. What was your favorite simple plan? Nobody's perfect. I'm just that's, a that's kid. Is that the one? No. <laughs> you guys are both wrong about everything. <laughs> you said nobody's perfect. Yeah. So the real one is nobody's perfect. Are you are you trying to allude to? I'm sorry, I can't be perfect. Yeah, that's exactly the one I was alluding to. I wasn't answering your question. Well, I know, but yours, yours wasn't a thing either. I was quoting something. Toe Jam and Earl? No. Pam Halpert. Um, well, I tell you what, man. It, uh... You know... He... he it seems like he could... <laughs> <laughs> By the way, you guys can't see this. Jake was just staring at the ceiling like really focused and then that's what came out it seems like you know Polly can do no wrong when it comes to sexually arousing Kara uh, yeah I mean it's 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 oh gross he he sure wore those shoes right and, <laughs> I mean she, she got worked up about his harness um well the the comment she specifically made was in regards to his wiener. That was later. She did make a comment about his harness. Yeah, right. the harness was yeah. first. That and was then, that was before they started, I think. And then she said, hmm. if I'm only going to have one penis for the rest of my life, he's got a great one. Which, hey. Hey, So uh, I want to know the context of the rest of the tent. Like, we didn't really get to see anyone's reaction. We also didn't get to see what anyone was talking about leading up to that. Yeah, like, what made her just say that? I... I is MTV editing this to make it sound like make her seem like she's just being really gross all the time? That's what she would say. They they listen apparently, but I I, I you can't edit the, the other things you do on like Instagram Live and all that. Well, here's what we know: she's committed. Yeah, uh, yeah, she you sure know, is. and you can't you can't get on someone for commitment. God, how I cherish commitment. <laughs> 
you know, <laughs> me, me being a divorcee over here. That's just where that's going to end. <laughs> <laughs> no uh, disrespect or shade, by the way. That's not what I'm trying to do. To who? Your ex-wife? Right. Okay. Um, no, but like, uh, hey man. You I don't can't... think she listens, by the way. No. no. You did tell us last night how you don't hate her guts. I don't hate her like, guts. Like, people expect you to and you don't. No, you just... I wish her the absolute best, man. We're... You just want her, you guys. My you, headphones came unhooked for a minute. Because you were telling us how you guys were just in a different place in life, and you know you just want to move on from that. Yeah, no. Uh, Speaking of moving on, Kyle and Maddie went next. <laughs> um, oh, so you don't want to talk about divorce and commitment? No, nah, not tonight. All right, maybe uh, another time. Yeah, I, immediately when they started this, I was like, Kyle and Maddie got a clear advantage because they are both long. Yeah, they they have to have the longest combined reach between them, and so. They're going to have an advantage. They killed it. They got all 16. Uh, they they were really quick with it, yeah, too. Yeah, they make the tribunal. I mean, they, we. I think we all thought, even though they were only the second team, like they did well enough they were going to be Yeah. Uh, in the tribunal. Yeah, absolutely. Nani and Turbo go. They get all 16. They do well. But he, they had a couple stumbles at the beginning, um, so that probably affected their time. Wes and D. Good Lord. That was, it was hard to watch. L- listen, we, we, listen. 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 <laughs> We've talked to both of them. Poe body's nerfed. I got it right that, that time. Is right. Uh, <laughs> I don't know why I was trying to say toe. Hey, man, what's up with these headphones? It's, it's you. It's it's your mic cable. Is it? Yeah, stop touching it. Yeah. I'm not. I'm not doing anything. Quit jacking around. All right, uh, keep talking. I'm going to... Should I do this? No, don't touch it. Uh, okay. if, if you heard any pops or anything, just ignore them. It's uh, just Jake being Jake. I think uh, I want to laugh. The seat bounces. <laughs> Maybe I don't know. Quit but, laughing. One of those bouncing uh, laughs. Wes and D, we 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 obviously uh, we we would call ourselves friends of theirs. Uh, we've interviewed both of them to varying degrees, and man, it was struggle tonight. Uh, they but, they they didn't not like. I feel like if there wasn't a, a time limit, like they would have probably finished because they or come close. They would have got. They would have done whatever, but. They they got seven, and no one else even came close to that bad of a number. Well, uh, to be fair, Wes did kind of forewarn us a couple weeks ago. He said that D would give us an opportunity to let us down, and I think that to this was... To let him down, I think, is his... Well, report. to let us down, yeah. too. But I think this was it, which, I mean, it seemed like she... She did say she's not a Heights person. Yeah, but um, I mean, honestly, honestly, though, this wasn't as crazy heights wise as some of the other ones. Like Jake and I said when we were watching it, like this one actually looks like fun. Like I, I'm not saying I wouldn't be scared if I was up there, but like out of all the other dailies, like this one seemed like something I would almost want to try. Well, to her defense, because she and I are very similar in our not swimmingness and not heightsness, I. Watching this daily challenge, I heard you say, "Oh, this would have been fun," and I'm thinking to myself, "This would probably be the hardest, one of the hardest things I would ever have to do if I ever decided to go on the challenge." No man, this Shrek would me, be uh, this would be one of the number one challenges for me. More than the like jumping, like on the one where Gus busts his face for you like 50 feet in the air, or the VR headset one where you're blind. Like I, I mean, I would have I would have a lot of trouble with those too. It's heights. I don't blame her for having a hard time with this. She, she did seem she was hesitant to jump, and uh, they were not meeting in the middle. They ended up kind of working out a rhythm, but I think by that point it was too late. No, nah, man, strap me to two 18-wheelers or let me swing between them. <laughs> they weren't strapped to both. How do, you swing, how do you swing between the two if you're strapped to both of them? <laughs> you don't have an answer. Okay. <laughs> That's fine. Um, so, Car and Theo go next. Uh, Theo, they do better than I expect. Theo's clearly got the longest reach out of anyone. Um, Car's not so much. It's because... Hold on. I'm moving his mic. It's because my charger, the cord's oh, like... That's, that's probably... It may be electrical interference touching or something. Oh, you think so? Yeah. Well, you're the whiz kid over there. Are we good? Unplug your laptop. Yeah, I probably could do that now. Yeah. Sorry, yeah. guys. Um... So, Car and Theo go. I, I thought Car might be a little hesitant because she doesn't seem to like heights very much either, from what I remember. And she obviously is not like super tall. She's not short, but she's not as tall as a lot of the other ones. What? How how tall is she? I thought she was relatively short. Jake, let's, look uh, it up. Let's let's throw it in that Google machine. Yeah, Google um, machine. 
to quote the great Again. Conrad Thompson. <laughs> okay. Uh, and so they do well. They get all 16. Uh, Hunter and Georgia go. They get all 16. I, I started typing Google machine. <laughs> Uh, Devon, Devon and Bear they do 15 they drop one about halfway through they do they do finish the rest um, and then Cam and Ashley get all 16 and so that that's why Wes and D's number is so bad because even Bear and Devon did well well Bear and Devon to be fair have done pretty well some days um, but, some days yeah the, the next lowest is 15 and uh, that's double what Wes and D had. Over double. Yeah, it, I, I mean, but like, that's that's not good. This has got to be the worst daily. Like, I guess compared to the rest of the group, this might be one of the worst team performances we've seen this season. That says a lot. That's really harsh. I, listen, I got to say what I feel. I am actually really surprised by these measurements on Kara. Go for it. Uh, what are you reading off of? Just... For reference sake. Dreshare.com. <laughs> okay. And so this is for sure accurate. So uh, we've got a, her height as five feet, nine and a half inches. What? I don't think she's that tall. I don't either. She's not taller than Polly. He's 5'9". I don't know. And then her weight as 121 pounds. I would have put her... She's got more muscle. Than no, that's what I'm saying. That's I'd not have, right. I would have put her more in the... 100- no, like even on Google, it just says 5'5". Five, five. What's what side are you on? I go I googled it and it didn't because normally Google will pull it up like that. I just typed your name and it, it came up five five. I typed actually it just filled it in. Cara Maria Sorbello height and weight. If you listen, it's you don't know how to use the Google machine. I, look, look, what you just type in height and it's got it right there five five. Right. Johnny uh, Divincenzo is five ten. She has zero children. Um, she is. Not single, according to Ranked Wiki. Or she, it says she's what single. I'm saying. What are you using? Uh, and then All Star Bio. <laughs> All of the number one news sources out there. Yeah, I'm glad I asked uh, you to look up. Her eye color is hazel. All right. So... Her build is slim. I'd say it's muscular now. Uh, she's a Taurus. If that means anything to you. <laughs> she's a car. Yeah. A Ford Taurus. Yeah. Built Ford tough. Uh, so, uh, we get to hear the tribunals. I'm done with her facts, by the way. <laughs> we don't oh, need to God, keep going. I'm just more. getting started over here. Uh, nope. nope. Kyle and Maddie, obviously. Hunter and Georgia. The third one, I think we all thought was going to be Car and Theo, and it was. Yeah. Um, so, we get to the tribunal where they're sitting at the table. Immediately, Hunter and Georgia say they're throwing in Turbo Nani because they called them out last week. They don't want to burn any other bridges. Car is- Kara pipes up here and reminds us, which I forgot about, that Hunter and Nani have like a thing going on. And she's like, hold on. This is suspicious. Yes, but also no, because they burned them last week. So it doesn't make sense. Hunter did a lot of things tonight that I think were not smart. Yeah, Um, but absolutely. I don't think this is one of them because he is... Telling the truth, like they did vote them in last week, and so they would understand them voting them back, and then also understand that like they're not really going after them. Yeah. Um. So, I again, I I we will get into what Hunter did later that I think was dumb, but uh, I think this was okay. It's not a great move, but it's not a bad move. Um. Kyle and Maddie obviously voting in Polly and Ninja. That's yeah. never going to die. Yeah. Um. And then Car and Theo, they. We're kind of at a weird crossroads because Theo's not voting in any of the Brits. And so that leaves basically Wes and D. And then what was the other one? What was the other one they were choosing between? Do you remember? Cam and Ashley. Was it? Because that's a British guy. I, I didn't figure that was it. Well, that was the only other names left on the board. Was it? Yeah. That, yeah, you're right. You're right. So that that is what it was. Um, So that's why they went with Wes and D because uh, D's not part of that British alliance. And... So that's where we first hear Hunter threaten to make it a tie. And I really thought we were going to see what happened. I wanted to. I really did want to. Um, and we see Hunter, for the most part, sticks with it. Um, they they basically go into the tribunal um, before the people that are being interrogated even come in. 
Theo just flat out asked Kyle, like, hey, are you working with Wes? And Carr thinks that's a really dumb thing to say. But uh, it did seem like Theo was the one that was able to control this interrogation. Uh, he, he was asking a lot yeah. of questions. He came ready. He came intent. I feel like... It was a peaceful no, tribunal, but I, though. I feel like he was looking forward to this moment. He was like, I'm coming into this one. I'm going to run the interview session here. Well, so I, I figured because Kyle was up top, Polly was voted in, Carr is in the room, it's going to get... Messy. Yeah. Because, again, a couple weeks ago, we saw it without Carr in there. Very playful. Weird, even. Yeah. And, uh, like, I enjoyed that. I and, did, too. Uh, so I thought it was going to go the other direction. It really didn't do either. Didn't get super playful, but also didn't get mean or like, hey, I'm going to fight you right now. There wasn't really much to it. No. Um, Theo was kind of running the show. Um, he basically asked some pretty easy questions. Uh, you know, Polly said he wasn't working with anyone. He's basically a lone, a loner outside of Kara. And then Wes said, I'll tell you, Hunter's my number one. I'm not telling you anything beyond that. Uh, obviously, I don't want to go into an elimination because I know it's just kind of a crapshoot. Like, you're not guaranteed to come out of it. All right. Tonight would have been one of those where it's anyone can win. It's not, oh, this is physical. Clearly, this person has the advantage. Like, it's not like the one where Bear and Devon won where it was pulling the sandbags. Yeah. And you're like, oh, Shailene's going to not be good at this. Um, it, it, was, it came down to who could complete the thing first. And so... They do the tribunal. Wes wants to have a little session with Polly, um, a group talk with Ninja and D there as well. And Wes brought up a good point because he's like, if if Polly gets voted in, Wes is like, I'm a trophy at this point because if you lose to him, you lost to the person that's won the most eliminations. So no one would be upset that you lost to him. But if you beat Wes especially after how well he's done this season, like that's a big accomplishment. And for someone like Polly, Who wants to take over the show. And, well, I mean, Wes said, you know, this would pad your resume. Yeah. And, like, a lot of people don't like Wes because they say he's cocky or whatever. If Wes had come into the season and it had been, like, a total flop, like, if they performed every day like they did at this daily and they hadn't won an elimination, they hadn't won some other stuff, I would understand it. But, I mean... Like, Weston's played pretty good this season, and so he was right. Like, if Polly were to call him out and lose, no one would be mad at Polly because, like, oh, you lost to a real, the, the number one elimination guy. But if he wins, like, that's huge. That would be huge for Polly as a challenge career. I mean, that, that's got to be the biggest thing he could do. I mean, other than if the only way it could be better if it was, like, a three-on-one, like, with the CT and uh, P. What's his name? I don't remember the guy from Brazil. JP. JP. I almost said PJ. JP and Kyle is if Polly took out Kyle and Wes in the same thing. Yeah. Um, that's the only way I could see it being... Or maybe Bananas and Kyle or something like that. But uh, no one has an elimination record like Wes. So it uh, it's, it's something to definitely think about. But then they get into uh, the killing floor. And the, again, immediately... Once they, they did a good job for a while not showing part of the elimination. Like, we didn't see the wheel part for a long time. Yeah. But as soon as they showed that, I was like, Cam and Ashley are going to be in this. Because there's so many clips of her spinning and throwing up, like, in the promos. Yeah, we... Real creamy. <clears throat> we had seen it a lot. It was weird. It was I, like egg yolks. I didn't see cream. I saw chunk. It was, like, yellow, though. I saw cream of wheat or something. It, it To me, it reminded me of like how when you like scramble eggs together you know, before you cook them. When I was a kid, I used to throw up all the time. <laughs> just just <laughs> for fun. I, I, what? I, like, it was like cut off at age. I think I've thrown up one time since like I was seven years Are old. Are you serious? I'm serious. But how many times did you throw up before that? Oh, we're probably talking 20, 30 times. I, I, I hate throwing up more than anything else. It's the worst. Yeah. And uh, I do it all the time. But I like remember now. I had one night I had my grandmother had fixed me some spaghettios, and uh, <laughs> wait with meatballs or without? Without. Oh no, and that's I, not you can't eat them like that. I must have just swallowed them whole because I threw up, <laughs> <laughs> and they were still intact. I remember this doesn't really have to. How old were you during that? Oh, I was like five, six years okay, old. Okay, so, so ab- about the same age, in like 
<laughs> in like first grade. I have two weird throw up stories. They're not super graphic though. I'm glad we're telling these right uh, now. But they're from the same age. Uh, one, uh, when I was about kindergarten, first grade, something like that, uh, I didn't have breakfast for some reason, but my mom gave me a bunch of blue wine punch. God. <laughs> I've heard I went, this story. I went to the bathroom and I had, I had to throw up. And it was like, what's in the, like, it was just like, oh, a hose. And I could not get it in the toilet. And it sprayed blue all over the wall in the toilet. It's like, some kid came by because they heard, and they're like, what are you doing? Because it was like alien threw up in there. It was just blue wine punch everywhere. I hadn't eaten anything. Oh, I love that story. And, uh, another one. I used. To, I used to. I remember specifically. I. It may have been because of that. I remember I got to go home. Like after that, I used to just tell my teacher all the time that I threw up because I wanted to leave school. <laughs> I would be like, "Hey, uh, I think it was Miss Campbell as a teacher in first grade. I was like, uh, I just threw up in the bathroom." <laughs> And she'd be like, go to the office and get your temperature checked. <laughs> and then, hold on, okay, so one more throw-up story. <laughs> and and this doesn't involve any of us, but do you do you remember our friend Caleb? <laughs> I know what you're going to talk about. He tells this story of this, this guy we're also acquainted, we're all acquainted with. His name's Aaron. It's not going to translate, I don't think, for the podcast, because it's a quiet story. I get it, but if you can just imagine someone throwing up quite excessively... But not making any sound. Their mouth is just <laughs> wide, wide open. And it's just... Yeah, this is great podcasting. <laughs> <laughs> because I'm more of the, like... Oh, it's, it's like, loud. Go, 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 go. <laughs> I'm more... Wait, you're wiggling and waggling down the hallway. <laughs> I'm more of the the gargling it like thrower a frog. upper. Man, it's... Whereas you have your... Yeah. Mine's loud. Like it, are it you, hurts. Are you okay? Like, <laughs> okay. Okay. We gotta stop talking about. No, this. actually, no, you know, the, we talked about this on the IG live. How, like people like that we ramble. Okay. How how Zachary <laughs> throws up? It's not often, but when he does, it is like he's dying. It like hurts, someone man. has taken a dull butter knife and is just stabbing him <laughs> over and over, and he goes. <gasps> it, like, and it's like he is screaming <laughs> from his gut. And and then you have those people too that are. They're more subtle with it. It's like that's her. That's how I sound because I don't want to make any like it. it like, I don't. I don't want to be like him. And I'm like, well, I'm like, oh, I'm I'm di- I'm dying. Like, I want this to be gone. And then like it's you're, you you don't have you don't have anything left. And it's just like you're just like contracting and like it hurts your. Ri- I hate it. I God, hate, I want to hear I you throw it. up now. I hate it more than anything else. I hate. It. I when do you think you'll throw up again? You know, I, I probably plan for like uh, March. Can well, you, May fifth. Can you call me? Because he gets sick on the regular. It's the craziest I thing actually, I've ever I ha- seen. No, it's, it's kind of it's usually kinda, out the other end. We just need to send you back to Kenya. Yeah, that's the thing. You come I, home it, sick again. That's that's what happened. He's been sick ever since he went to Kenya. I got the worst sickness of my life twice in he, Kenya. You know what happened? He accidentally stuck his toothbrush in the water she wasn't one there. morning because he forgot and then brushed his That's teeth and then realized what happened you told me that you did that you told me that you did that and i was like this is what's wrong with you <laughs> you Just stick your happened. toothbrush in the water you can't use their water you can't it's, use the water it's real bad That's why to, you gotta have bottled water you have to brush your teeth with bottled water and everything like that uh anyway uh no more <laughs> we're not gonna do any more throw no that was stuff. a fun little segment i like that <laughs> the throw up segment oh, okay so <laughs> it, 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 we'll just get it out of the way right now i do have one more from elementary school <laughs> okay you're trying to get know, us off I of know, it but now we're, we're here might as well uh there was a kid that used to get in trouble a lot and he was like he he was kind of a bully and he definitely had like adhd and like would always be in the principal's office always a troublemaker um but like one time he got sick at lunch. Do you remember, was your school like where they had the like a the the tables that fold up into like an A shape and then you lay them down and all the stools are attached? Yeah. Uh-huh. Okay. So we had we had those and so ev- at our school everyone in the school ate at the same time in the gym cuz it was a small enough school. Yeah. Still you probably, could do that. Still probably 2 300 kids at least. Well, he got sick and he had who is it? He had like started chewing on a french fry. And he like spit it out, and it was like hanging from his milk carton, and it's like chocolate milk. So it looked real gross. And I look at this kid beside me, and I was like, "Oh, look at that!" 
And he immediately just throws up everywhere. And I'm not kidding. It was like in a movie. It set off a chain reaction. And it went one to another to another to where they had to abandon lunch for the day. What was that like powder stuff they would pour yeah, I know, over? Yeah, I know what you're talking what about. Was it just that? absorbed the liquid. It has a very distinct smell. That is weird, uh, man. It's like mothballs no, or something. The The weird thing is... I was the one who pointed it out and made the first kid like really throw up, but the kid who was actually sick got in trouble because he left it on his his uh, his carton because I didn't get in trouble. Oh, that's not his fault. It wasn't, but it wasn't my fault that the kid beside me threw up everywhere. What'd you say it was sitting there? It was like a half chewed French fry hanging on his milk carton, and it was real gross looking because it was chocolate mm-hmm. milk. Because we only could choose like white milk or chocolate milk back then. Because you sh- should want to eat your fries with. Yeah. And down it with some chocolate milk. Yeah. It, it was like a movie, though. They literally had to clear out the entire lunch and just be like, we're not doing lunch anymore. Well, I mean, think about how many sympathetic vomiters there are. Okay. I'm one. There was a lot at my elementary school. I, like, I'm okay talking about it, but if I, like, see someone throw up, it's not as bad. But if I hear it, like, if I'm there and I see and hear it, it will cause something to stir inside me. Speaking of throwing up, I was going to make a joke about Polly, but I don't really have a... I don't oh, really, come I don't on. Really have, I, know, I know. I don't really have a segue. Uh, basically, we get to the vote. We get to the tribunal vote. And Kyle and Maddie, obviously still sticking with Polly and Ninja. Um, Hunter and Georgia. Hunter... St- oh, no, they, it wasn't them. They weren't, they weren't next. It was uh, Carr and Theo. Mm-hmm. Car throws her vote, whatever. Anyway, they had they basically gridlock it because Hunter's the last one to vote. He says he's going to tie it up. Pretty sure that was strategic by the producers because if they put him before Kara, she's not going to tie it up. Um, and so because of that, Hunter's stubborn. He's like, I'm going to tie this thing up. Like he, he even says so. He's like, I'm going to tie this up. And TJ's like, we're going to try this again. That was his plan all along, and it makes absolutely no yeah, sense. Yeah, I didn't, I I didn't just, get this. I just did not understand. They are safe from an elimination. There are only like eight teams left, seven teams left. And he is wanting to risk it for something that they don't even know what the outcome is. Exactly. And so... And TJ is, like, very adamant, you don't want to do this. Like, he didn't even ask... This time, he didn't even ask if they were sure. Like, last time, he's like, are you sure? This time, he said, no, we're going to do this again. Yeah, and he was getting stern, like a parent who, like, had enough. And, like, it comes down... Polly and Ninja are the votes for Kyle and Maddie, obviously. It comes to Car. Car's going to try to change it, but she's like, he's just going to tie it up no matter what, which is true... But she does change her. No. No, she doesn't. Georgia. She stays with Wes and D. Because Hunter was not going to change at all. Which is weird. Yeah. So George is like, listen, they've already got two votes. I'm not going to risk us getting involved in this. So I'm going to vote for Polly and Ninja. That's not who I wanted to vote for. But she played smart. That was decent. And you know what? Right. I'll, I'll take back what I said. She just is probably a nice person because she, she thought that through. Like, that was, even Wes, I think, said, like, that was really dumb. Like, what is he, like, there's no, there's no beneficial outcome to that. Right. Well, Wes said that he thought Hunter was trying to pull a Wes move, but executed it completely wrong, the opposite way you want to do it. It was like if they were, like, if, if like, so if Wes is, like, playing chess, Hunter's just, like, holding two hot dogs, like, I'm gonna win. <laughs> <laughs> and, like, it doesn't make any sense. <laughs> and everyone's like, I don't really understand what you're doing. see him with two hot yeah. dogs, too. Like, <laughs> You get on me for my analogies. What a wild little deal you But that's did. the thing. It, it, does, it, it was supposed to not make any sense. It's like, oh, we're, we're playing this game. And Hunter's like, I got my own hot dog game. <laughs> it's going to make sense. Trust me. And... Uh, I was just like, I, it, it, it's still, I don't, I, I, I can't even like try to understand what it, what the benefit would be. Like, there's not any benefit. No. Cause again, you vote, if you vote Polly in, um, that takes out someone who would come for you, who also has been winning a ton of dailies, who also is going after Kyle, who is a fringe Alliance member, even though Wes wouldn't say it like that's an Alliance for, um, Wes and whatever. Wes and D are on the chopping block. They could just as easily go in. It could have ended up like, all right, well, these people are going in, 
and now uh, whoever TJ wants from the tribunal. We don't know. Like we, I hope we do get to see a, a gridlock at some point. I wonder if now after this elimination, if the tribunal is only going to be three players or if it's going to continue to be the top six now. Oh, yeah. I didn't even think about yeah. that. Um, so anyway, it comes down to Georgia flipped her vote, saved herself and her teammate and everyone else in the tribunal. Uh, it, it made complete sense. And so it's Polly and Ninja, and they get down there, and again, that's we knew it was going to be Cam and Ashley. Um, but Ninja, she was not, she wasn't going to let him pick D and Wes. I liked that she finally came out of her shell and said that she's going to be adamant about having Polly respect her and respect her opinion and who she. Wants to protect. Well, and here's the thing. They did not know that after that elimination, it was going to be a single player game. Right. She could have burned that bridge with D. Uh Uh-huh. If Wes and D went in and they won. Well, I guess, no, she would have been, (laughs) she would have been sent home. Ninja would have been sent home. But again, if D is a legitimate friend, like it doesn't make sense to to kill that right now. Even though Wes, I, I get it from Polly's side that he wanted Wes and D. It makes sense because, again, it's a win-win for him. You lose yeah. to him, oh, well, I lost to one of the best. You win, you you have all of the right to talk as much crap as you want. Um, I will say, to his credit, he did seem to like genuinely listen to her and take in her consideration and you know they went with another another way. The, the fact that he listened to Natalie and how she was really serious about not picking Wes and D and he listened to that and they picked someone else. Like I really appreciated that. Yeah. I, I, re- I respected that. I was really glad to see that he didn't just run over her and make the decision for her. Because didn't didn't Bear do that to Dave on? Absolutely. Yeah. Bear was like a freight train. He had her crying in the tribunal. Exactly. I think it's pretty sorry you guys to expect Polly to run her over. He, you got you got to admit he's he he wants what he wants, but I do think the 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 stories out there. I don't know if the, all the cast members knew, but they said something about uh not Bear Ashley had some sort of a leg injury. And so he was clearly dealing with something. It, it went back to a few dailies ago. He hurt himself. And so... Yeah, but this wasn't something that... It wasn't anything physical. I agree. Which he was begging for, which... He was. Um, I mean, if you got a bum leg... I, I it, That would have been an interesting physical route because Cam and Ashley clearly are bigger. Clearly are probably stronger... Just overall strength, but Polly and Natalie are super agile and probably like as strong, like pound for pound. You know, they're they're again they're probably not stronger overall. Like Ashley's probably like you know can lift more weight. Or whatever <laughs> I mean, else. look at him. Yeah, um, but like they if it would have been something like the the first elimination with Georgia and Hunter. And Ashley and uh, I don't even remember who her partner was Chase Chance whatever the Bachelor guy, where the you Bachelor. had Tinder Chase yeah where you had to get around and like score the, yeah. the whatever like he's pa- just the Bachelor Polly and and Natalie probably would have had an advantage in that type of physical thing but I don't know it it would have been interesting to see but it's basically a puzzle where it's it's a hard elimination um because the only person that can see the key you you guys all saw it they're spinning Cam throws up a lot. The other person putting the key together is blindfolded. So they have to not only find the right spot in out of like 30 spaces, but they also have to have the orientation of the tile correctly facing the right way, which Polly and Ninja got done first. They had one wrong. That let Cam and Ashley catch up. They got done. They had one wrong. So it was super close. It wasn't like the elimination where... Josh and Amanda went home, and then supposedly it took Ash and Cam like 45 more minutes or 20 minutes or whatever to finish. Like It was really close, it seemed. Um, but ultimately, uh, Polly and uh, Ninja won. And I wonder if Cam's sickness played anything into that. Because like, I can't even imagine trying to like do that while you're throwing up on yourself. like spinning. And he, 
you can't like your hands are kind of restrained too. Thro- throwing up scrambled eggs. That's what it looked like. And it, it like she it kept happening while she was turning so that it would get in her eyelashes I, and her face and like that's what hurt me. I the fact that she was throwing up on her face like I, I felt for her. I saw some people. Say, Did you think that was funny? <laughs> no. I saw some people say like she was throwing up in her like weave or her hair or whatever she had in. And that's hard too. Yeah, and. uh I think I think she probably only threw up a couple times, but they they replayed the same clip from a couple different angles. Uh, but I mean, I still like it sucks. Like she that. still threw up. Yeah, and afterwards she was kind of like, yeah, like she was. If I had thrown up like that, I would not want to be doing interviews or whatever. <laughs> it's uh, like throwing up at like Disneyland or something off of a weird roller coaster. Well, you like once you get off, you're fine because I mean, you're still having fun. And right. We uh yeah, I think so. Do you do you do you like to throw up on rides at Disney World? Disneyland? Never thrown whichever? up on a on a ride before. I haven't, I haven't either, I don't think. But what we did find out was that Cam is a silent thrower upper. <laughs> yeah, she was really quiet about it. So when she throws up it sounds like <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that's great podcast. That was a good sound. Um Yeah, uh you know, one one thing we did kind of gl- gloss over. I I don't like to typically talk about stuff that happens outside the show. In this in the Slack group, someone brought up like what we thought about the whole Wes and Davon thing. Uh, he did bring up her kid, um, and it's there's been some back and forth, whatever. Well, here's here's the tweet that Wes put out. I saw. I read it earlier. I don't I don't really like to get into typically the stuff that's outside right. of the show. Right. But it did come up on the show as well. Right. Uh. I don't know if she said this on the the show or on Twitter, but he quoted her as saying, I'm going to get my boys from back home to kill you. Wes says, wow, you're a horrible role model for your kid, which he actually said in the show. Wow, you're a really good role model, like being sarcastic. He's saying that came, they edited her part out or something along those lines. Um, And then he uh, quotes the internet saying somehow, or has the internet being somehow split as to who is wrong. Um, and then he says, FYI, she apologized to me, so I've moved on. I appreciate her acknowledging when she acted like she, a bad role model. She adamantly said that never happened. That like, she didn't apologize? No, no. She said she never said those words. He was like, you are lying about this. This never happened. And he was like, okay. Because someone, someone's like, yeah, whatever. And he's like, well, I decided not to press charges. I feel like that was maybe joking, but she was like, she's she was mad. Like She said, this never happened. I don't know. Why are you lying about this? I would never say that. And a lot of people are jumping to her defense. That's fine. We weren't there. We didn't see it. However, she she's made a comment like that in the past. Yeah, and I if you guys listened to us back last season, she said something very similar to that on Twitter to Shane right around the time we interviewed him. That's the reason why I remember it so well. Uh, she did say like her family would be at the reunion to like stomp him out. And, and then nobody got to invite anybody to the reunion. Yeah, and I again, I I think that may have just been like a thing in the a, like a blow off tweet. Like it's not really going to happen. But I mean, she has said things like that. In the she past. has said things like that. I'm not saying she did or didn't now because we weren't there. But like when she said that, I was like, we kind of did that with Shane. Um, I don't know. I wasn't there. We none of us were. The only thing. We'll see as if they show it to us afterwards. We we don't know. But um, after they win, TJ's like, hey, guess what? You win the relic, but this is a special relic. And everyone's like, what's happening? And he says, it's special because it's the last one. And so that means they're going to start not having safety after eliminations. And also, he's like, oh, by the way, there's no more teams. Which Kyle was really bummed out about because he was like, all the girls are scared of my partner. Uh, Maddie is terrifying, and now she's not on my team. Well, the first thing I noticed was uh, Ninja was stoked. Well, she, she said they don't She was they didn't so bond. excited about it. Turbo also was very happy about it. I was surprised by that because he loved Nani. I know, but he was smiling and like really joyful and like as they were leaving he was like smiling, jumping up and down. I wonder if he just prefers working alone. If he ha- he's more of like a lone wolf. The stuff he's wolf won kind of has person. been That's the thing is he comes from yeah. a competition where it's one on one. Yeah. 
or one versus everyone. Like it's yeah. kind of like a, You're a dependent rumble upon uh, yourself and no one else. The yeah. uh, the other person I noticed was really excited was Maddie. Yeah. Well. Yeah. Yeah. Maddie. Maddie and that's why Kyle was nervous. <laughs> Maddie and Ninja, Ninja and Natalie were two that I noticed being really excited, and they even said as far you know they went as far as saying. I'm really excited because now I can play my own game and I don't have their baggage. Yeah, they're, they're not caught between Kyle and uh, Polly. And a lot of the, the, the rookies are excited because they've been kind of playing in the shadows of their teammates. And now they can do whatever they want. So I'm excited to see how this plays out. One other clarification TJ gave. First place is going to win 750000 Second place, 200000 Third place, 50000 That's... Again, it, well, one person like win fifty thousand dollars for third place, like that's still good. Hey. Um, yeah, that is pretty good. And so, uh, it, I'm excited to see what's going to happen as they go on. I wonder if that's going to extend the season. We we talked about now it's not going to be four people in an elimination at once. It might only it could be, but it might only be two or three person eliminations because no one's on teams anymore. So we'll just have to see how that plays out, how the tribunal works out. Um, one of our guys in, of stuff. in the Slack, I think it was. Uh, yeah. By the way, we're we're gonna have to kind of figure out how to do this effectively. Uh, we're still learning. Yeah, we may have to make a whole separate channel just for questions, um, but we'll we'll get through it. Yeah, I believe it was Justin mm-hmm. asked, uh, "Do we think that um, equalizers will come back into play?" But I, 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 I saw hope that question. Not. I hope not. I, th- I think that was a very bad misstep on MTV's part. I just don't think the eliminations are going to look like that because when they did, you had teams where mm-hmm. it was guy girl or girl yeah. girl or guy guy, and like this, like they're not going to go into elimination as teams, and I don't think they're going to pit a guy against a girl. Well, uh, they might. I mean, it, it could be. Um, there, there could be because again, the two. We just don't know the format yet. We'll have to wait and see, but it could be a guy versus a girl elimination. Um, obviously, I don't think they're going to do like Hall Brawl or anything like that. Um, but What if they did? Well, I mean, we'll just have to see. Um, but it's... Uh, I-, I hope they don't bring that back because that was a very controversial thing from last season because everyone knew it was happening, but they never once talked about it on the show. <clears throat> That's yeah. what bothered me. The fact that they didn't even acknowledge it yeah, and uh, again, Devin's point when we interviewed Devin, he's like, "Listen, if I'm going against CT, I should get an advantage because he's gigantic compared to me." Brian was, was the it one Brian? That, yeah, yeah, it was Brian. Um, and so, uh, I hope not. Um, again, this it's a whole new producer, head producer from Justin Booth. We've talked about it before. Um, so I'm hoping he has. Even though he wasn't involved in the last few seasons, I hope he's watched them and learned from their missteps because this season's been great so far. I mean, it has, and uh, I'm 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 excited that he's back in charge, and I hope he uh, he stays in charge if it keeps going the way that this one's gone. And so, uh, other than that, I mean, there's not there's not much else to get into. Um, we'll uh, we'll we we try not to speculate too much without knowing what's coming next. But let's get into superlatives for the night. Who smashed some heads? Who wants to go first? You pointed at Jake first. All right, Jake, go first. You know what? Out of uh, a mutual respect we seem to have for one another, I'm going to give this one to Polly this week for uh, giving me... Uh, this has nothing to do with the show. No, no, no. It, it does because uh, he listens. I'm talking and... about this, the episode tonight. Well, this is, you know what, this happened today, the episode came on today, mm-hmm. so it falls within the same time frame. Yeah. Am I right or am I wrong? You're wrong. Yeah. Okay. I'm going to give it to Polly for... If you would have said because he won an elimination, like, that would have been a good... Well, maybe I wasn't finished. <laughs> okay. You know, you guys do that to me a lot. I have a train of thought, and then I've got... It's, it's probably because you take, like, three second pauses when you're... Have you ever met a good storyteller? There's, that's what they're for. Dramatic pauses to build the tension. Every three words? It, you have poker <laughs> pulled up on your phone right now. <laughs> yes, you do. Or it's either that or spades. <laughs> no. Yeah, you're you just lying. <laughs> no, because look, oh. you know why I pulled it up? Because I knew what I was going to pick tonight. Okay. 
Okay, good God. Why did you pick Polly? Well, I've been trying to say. I've been waiting for you to spit it out. He smashed my head, for one, by, I think my exact quote was, real recognize real. That's self-flattery in the biggest way possible. Well, you know what? Good on you for recognizing self-flattery. It's Polly's favorite fat pastime. Fat time. Yeah. <laughs> also, he won. So. He did win. I'll give him that. What's yours? Okay, I didn't know if you were ready for me or not. Yeah. Um, smashed heads. I put Hunter smashed his own head by flip-flopping on... Uh, his votes. Don't you dare. I thought Don't we were so, done. Don't you dare. So, I so we he, were done. he smashed his, his, his current self <laughs> by everybody now thinks he's totally dumb because he was trying to make this big elaborate thing in the tribunal vote, um, but it ended up backfiring and now nobody, like everybody thinks he doesn't know what he's doing. And I also think that it has smashed his future head self. Whoa. Further in, further in this season, I think that... <laughs> I think that now that there are no teams, this is going to really come back to bite him in the butt. I thought we were done making jokes about... You were the only uh, one. Hunter's really. hair. I didn't say anything about his hair. I talked what's about his head. Top, what's on top of his head? Skin. <laughs> it's a so, scalp. Uh, you know, I'm going to give mine to, tonight to uh, Ninja. Um, you know what? Yeah, that's a good one. Because she got to... Solidify her friendship with D. She stood up for herself. Herself, and it it ultimately is going to pay off because, uh, you know they're uh, they're both going forward as individuals, and uh, you know I will give Polly a special shout out for not like making it World War Three about uh, <laughs> who to vote yeah, in. Yeah, who to vote in? Because again, from from his standpoint, Wes would have been super tempting, man, and so. Uh, I, I'm gonna give it to D, uh, not D, to uh, Ninja, because uh, I mean they won, they 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 just did, and so and she stood up for herself. Yeah. Amen. She demanded the respect that she deserved. Amen. Who got their head smashed? I don't know. I didn't come away from from the night. I I don't I don't want to get cute for the sake of getting cute. Like Cam's eyelids got smashed. You know I don't want to do. Better throw up. God, I hate you. I put, I put Cam. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't put that. I put Cam's stomach because she oh. couldn't stop throwing up. There you go. On yeah. herself. Well, so what are you picking? I don't. You got to pick something. Do I? Yeah. Who got their head smashed? Yeah. Yeah. Zach, just get, let me let me think on this for a second. Let me stew. Okay. You go. As much as it pains me. It's got to be Wes and D. Pitiful performance on the daily compared to everyone else. Yeah. And it, it was it was hard to watch. Listen, I I I I know who I like on the show, I know who I dislike. But I, I'll try to be fair about uh, objective things. And tonight they were bad on the daily and like didn't even come halfway to the next lowest team. And so that that's got to be it for me. It's disappointing. Yeah, we have a uh, Hannah. I believe you have selected inan- inanimate objects before, right? Yeah. yeah. How about how about Polly sex switch? That's got so that it got smashed on, <laughs> or it just it only has one option now yeah. on. So his sex switch <laughs> got their head smashed. It's head, there's not multiple sex switches. There's just one. You said his had different settings. It was like a dimmer. Yeah, but that's still one switch. Dimmer like a washing machine on heavy. <laughs> yeah, that's a great analogy. It works. <laughs> it absolutely works. Uh, it correlates. So uh, yeah, again, it's a. Uh, did everyone go? Did you? Yeah. yeah, yeah, we all went. So we're we're good. Um, one last thing. Uh. We talked about the top of the show. I'm not going to admit fit. <laughs> I was, was going to say, I'm not going to finish that, but I'm not going to skip uh, the album of the week and all that. Someone got real excited because they thought you are. I don't know. That one guy. Uh, but, uh, again, patreon.com slash smashing heads podcast. Smashing heads podcast.com. That's just our website now. On that website, it has all of our social links. It has uh, our Twitter wall, our Instagram wall. So everything's on there. It has a... 
uh, playback thing, so you can listen to the podcast right there. Click throughs to all of our social media, all that type of stuff. So, and the Patreon is on there as we well. Should, we should put our pictures up on there. We can and write like a little bio. Great. <laughs> um, <laughs> we, we, how did we get here? <laughs> yeah, so, that should be the opening question. How go, did we get here? Go to smashingitspodcast dot com. <laughs> it redirects to everything that we talked about. Social media, iTunes, Podbean, Spotify, all that. Spotify's not working yet. Cause again, if you're if you've been paying attention, I just got the email that it went active. So uh, again, do that, and we will now get to high school album of the week. You'll go first, cause right, cause we were making funny jokes about how I think I've used up all of my. And then I suggested a, a joke band who's not good. Which I'm going to suggest because just, uh, no. if you are into the most generic, it is man, hardcore emo music. It, it was like when metalcore was like at its pinnacle of like, oh well, we can just turn these bands out like this. But this one, we're going to add a keyboard player because that was a trendy thing yep. for a little while. Yep, still yeah. remains yeah. of love and lunacy. I didn't even know the album name. I I didn't even like like even when we were listening to a lot of that. I didn't even like them then. Still remains of love and lunacy. If you were just into the generic of the generic when it comes to hardcore music, and it it was that. It is uh, that. Hannah, what's yours? Uh, mine was Shrines by Purity Ring. I absolutely love that group. Super good. I get super the Purity Ring, good. and there was a band from the 90s called The Promise Ring. I get them confused all the time. No, Purity Ring is super good. The Promise Ring is super good, just different. What was the ring that... Uh, it's just called The Ring. Pay the Money Wubby <laughs> told us about tonight. Did you talk about Jake, a ring? I wish you'd quit stepping on my toes. Did you talk? Did he talk about a ring? It's fine. Uh, <laughs> mine, mine... For uh, it's not one that I recommend. Like, oh, go back. This is a great album to listen to. But it is one I listen to a whole lot whenever I bought it. And it's uh, "Senses Fail." Let it enfold you. Hey, I feel like I've said that one before. Have you? But it's a good one. I think we may have talked about it off mic. Like yeah. as far as like we wouldn't recommend it, but I still listen to it, and it's very nostalgic for me. Uh, it it's kind of what made me realize back in the day that Walmart uh, only edited stuff that got a parental advisory sticker. Because, like, Block Party's album had, like, the F word one time in his parental advisory. And this one was way further than that. And it, it was a lot about... And it's very generic. It's very, like, cringy. Oh, let's play Russian roulette as we kiss. Blow your brains out on me. Like, it's like... Come on. Yeah, that was why I kind of... Uh, that's why I stopped listening to them after a while. That's... I even liked the album after that. Still searching. Yeah, but, man, it's got... Their front man's got a lot of unresolved issues in his life. The first dude. line of the album is "Love me gently with a chainsaw." I mean, and it's like I I, I will say because we used to listen to it a lot, it does kind of hit a, like a nostalgia point for oh, me. Oh man, when that acoustic guitar starts on "Buried Alive," yeah, man, um, that's the again song I can't there. fully recommend that album, but uh, I, I'm gonna say it because I did listen to it on the way back from Memphis the other day. Yeah. Um, so the movies for this this week, uh, it's 2012. Jake, you go first. I enjoy horror movies. Horror movies, and I really enjoy bad horror movies, like the ones that just B you just movies. Laugh, you just yeah. laugh at. That get, I don't I don't ever look for those, but yeah, yeah. Um, but this movie is not a bad horror movie. Aww. This is a great, great horror movie, and that is Sinister. Super, super. It's just unique in how it 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 um it gets the scares right because it's not it's jump scare movie like it's legitimate like you are like on the edge of your seat like waiting on something to happen like the whole time and they pay it off in such a cool way. Um, also, Ethan Hawke. Shout out to him. You know what I just realized with your explanation in 2010, I should have picked Birdemic. Oh yeah, uh, that, you is, should that have. is a great bad movie. Yeah, uh, that's like your favorite movie. It is not my favorite movie, but I do enjoy watching it. Um, so there, okay, that's that's yours. What's Twenty One Jump Street? That's gonna be mine. I know. That's why I wanted. To, that's why I wanted to go before you. Because you're a jerk. No, we both love love I, those movies. I watched that on a plane when it came out on the way to Kenya, actually, and I watched it. It's the only movie I think I've ever watched back to back because I was like four in the morning and I couldn't sleep. And so I watched one movie, and then I immediately started it over again because I was like, "This is so much funnier than I expected it to be." And he really likes Jonah Hill and Channing Tatum, 
They're a good combo. Yeah. Channing Tatum in that movie uh, surprised me with how funny he was. He's got a good sense of humor. I'll tell you what. If I can't pick that, then I'd probably go with. Ah, God, I don't even know. There's not. There were right. It, this was a hard year for me, honestly. Really? Yeah. It wasn't a hard year for me. I just saw Twenty One Jump Street, and I was like, "Oh, that's it." Well, yeah, but you you picked mine, so okay. I, I guess didn't... I guess The Dark Knight Rises because that's that same year. Yeah, I um, mean, it's a good movie. Uh, so that that would I'm be mine. Su- I'm surprised you didn't do like Avengers. No, I mean, I I wasn't watching those when they came out. Oh. Well, um, my other one, I I I expected you to pick Moonrise Kingdom. No, I mean that's. To me, that's not like even in the top like five Wes Anderson movies. Okay, well, Django Unchained was my number two. Well, you don't get a number two. Okay, um, because I won again. You made it this far. Join in on the Patreon. Get the Slack group growing. We'll be doing more of this. We'll probably have someone dedicated from here on out on the shows to just we'll we'll be like, all right, we're taking questions right now. Like, what are your questions? Um, we're still figuring it out because we just kind of launched this. So. Again, smashingheadspodcast.com. That links to everything that we're doing. And until next week. Hey, real one last plug, because oh I meant to do this at the top of the oh, show. I know what you're going to say. Yeah. This is actually a good plug. Um, I joined up with uh, Scott Yeager of Challenge Mania and Logan. Hi- is it Hendrick? 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 He- Hendrick? Hendrick. Anyway, from, he said it last night. Even Scott had to ask him. It's either Hendrick or Hendrick from. Uh, the Hendrick Hendrick Files or Rotten Banana Podcast. Yeah. Um, again, it's the podcast we shouted out earlier. Um, and so, then, so we did a WrestleMania pre. What wasn't there, Alan? Oh, Alan uh, Aguirre. Uh, is it Aguirre? It's Aguirre. Yeah, he, he writes articles for Medium um, dot com about the challenge. He writes a lot of them. He's really active on Reddit. Uh, it was kind of a cool like combination of worlds coming together to talk about something. Not really challenge related, but that overlaps in a lot of different areas. So uh, that's up on Challenge Mania's Patreon right now. Right, but I think it's going wide after. Or I, I think we're not one hundred percent on that, but it's definitely on uh, their Patreon. Check it out. Yeah, again, Jake, Allen, Logan, and Scott talk about the upcoming WrestleMania, which is Sunday, right? This Sunday, and yeah. we talk for like two and a half hours. So yeah, so you get a lot of wrestling talk again if you're wanting to do that that's on challenge mania's patreon um go there check it out and until next week have a good night everyone